Okay, so next let's talk about how to simulate several DFA simultaneously. And the reason to do uh, to do this is because once you can simulate several uh, automata in the same time, you can you can you can uh, define languages that are the combination of how those uh, automata behave or how their original uh, languages behave, like the intersection and so on. We will see shortly uh, uh, what I mean. But before that, let me uh, make a quick reminder about Cartesian product. So Cartesian product, um, this is, uh, you know, I give you two sets, X and Y, uh, and the Cartesian products X times Y is all the pairs, X and Y, right, such that X is in X and Y is in Y. Okay, so this is the definition of Cartesian product. Um, it's named after Descartes, uh, René Descartes. I'm not completely sure how you get from Descartes to Cartesian, but, you know, I think it's done through Latin, like everything else in life. Okay, so what is what do we want to do? I give you two languages, and I give them... Uh, I provide them to you via by giving you two uh, DFAs, M1 and M2, and I would like to compute the language which is the union or the language of the intersection. Right. Now, a natural way to do that um, is to, you know, run M1 the first automata on the, on the first input, run the second automata on the second input, and then ask, are both of them in an accepting state? If both of them in an accepting state, then what we get is an end, right? It's a word that appears in both languages. Similarly, if we want the union, I can ask, is either of the automata in an accepting state, right? That would be the union. Okay. Uh, or I can, for example, ask, is exactly one of them in the accepting state and the other one is a non-accepting state? And then what I will get back is, of course, the symmetric difference of the two languages. Okay, so, um, so the problem is that, of course, simulating uh, two DFAs in the same time seems hard, right? Because somehow you have to uh, feed the input into two DFAs, right? Which is... You know, uh, not completely clear how to do it. So the idea is that what we're going to do, we're going to simulate both of them simultaneously by building a big automata, which is in fact um, encodes all the information about the two automatas in the same time. And the idea is very simple, right? Think about um, taking their Cartesian product. Right. So intuitively, think about uh, drawing a matrix where the rows are the state of one of the automata and the columns are the state of the other automata. And then we, we essentially fill the matrix with all the Cartesian products of the states. Right. And uh, now how do we do the... Uh, how do we do the transitions of this? So the... the the Cartesian product is going to have, you know, the product of the states. And now the transitions are also natural, right? Because if you're in this state, you know in what state of this automata you're in and what state of the automata you're in. Okay, so maybe I should try to demonstrate this, right? So let's assume that uh, I'm in this state of the product, right? This corresponds to being in this state of the uh, uh, column automata and then this test of the raw automata, right? And now assume that uh, uh, I get an input which is zero, right? Uh, so I go from here to here. Oops, uh, maybe I should use the other uh, uh, pen, right? So I get I go I go from here to here, right? Because I got a zero, but here I stay in the same state, right? So this means that. Uh, in the next iteration, right, in the next iteration, I'm going to be in this state here and this state here, which in the product is going to be this state, right? So if I tell you the state 
um, in the product automata, right? I tell you in which exactly entry in the matrix I am, I know what entry the col which column and row I am in the matrix, and vice versa, right? So, so this product automata, I essentially uh, the transition function is just the transition function for the row and the column, and uh, I just put it together. Right. So essentially, what we are doing is that we are creating a new automata where the state is just the the union of the two states of the two original automata. Right. We have the the product where the first column is the state of the first automata, and the second column is the state of the second automata, and then we just simulate it. Right. Um, Okay, so here is a maybe a more uh, interesting example. So what is this example? Here we have an automata. Let's assume that the, the input is, you know, strings over zero, right? So the alphabet only have one character. So the row, uh, the column automata here, just count, uh, uh, count the uh, input modulo five, right? This is just modulo five, and it accepts if the input is modulo 5. On the other hand, uh, the, raw uh, the, the raw automata uh, is uh, modulo 3, right? So that's what, uh, and it accepts if the number of characters in so far is 0 modulo 3, right? And the product, you know, what does the product do? Well, if you think about it, it uh, accepts all strings that are modulo is 0 modulo 3 and modulo 5, which means that they are 0 modulo 15, right? Now, uh, this is the intersection, right? Now, how did we get it? Well, we just computed the dot product, right? Every, again, the first column is the row, the second uh, entry is the column, right? And we got this matrix. Now, we do the transitions, right? And the transitions here are easy, right? Because... Um, we pick a state, let's say this one, this corresponds to this state here and this state here. And now we get another input. Well, we have to move to the right. So we move to this state, right? And we move down here to this state. And now we just mark the new state here, right? So this will be the transition, which is again, indeed what the transition in the diagram is, right? And, and that's it. Right, so, so, the, so in fact, computing product automata is pretty mechanical. The only non-mechanical part is deciding which are the accepting states, right? If you want an end, then you pick only the states that are accepting in both machines. If you want an or, if one of them is accepting, then you're accepting. And if you want symmetric difference, you know, it have to be accepting only in, uh, they have to be accepting exactly in one of them. Okay. So, um, so let's do the product automata definition formally, which is, uh, you know, not too, uh, hopefully not too difficult or not too interesting. So first the state state of the product automata is just the Cartesian product of the two states of Q1 and Q2, right? We have two automatas, M1, and we have a second automata, M2, and we want to compute their intersection in this case. So the, we take the set state state of the uh, new automata to be their Cartesian product, right? It just essentially the pairs, where the first one coordinate is the first automata, state of first automata, second coordinate is the state from second automata. The start state is, of course, the start state of the the start state is the again the product uh, of the two start state. I mean, it's the first coordinate is the start state of the first automata, and the second coordinate is the start state of the second coordinate. Uh, the transition function is a bit more interesting, right? So the transition function now gets maybe the process should be bigger too. We have now the state. The state is now a pair. Right? And we have a character. That's the input. Right? And now what we, we have to do is every coordinate is going to be uh, transited, uh, treated according to its original definition. Right? So in the first coordinate, 
we apply the transition of the first automata delta 1 to Q1 on the input A, and then the second coordinate we apply the second coordinate, and that's it. Okay. So that's relatively easy, uh, hopefully. And now the accept states, well, um, if we want the intersection, we take the product, right? We take the Cartesian product of the accepting states, you know, those are all the pairs where both coordinates belong to uh, the two accepting states uh, of the two automata, respectively. And as such, readily we get that um, that the language of the intersection is regular, right? Why did we get that it's a regular language? Well, we showed that DFA um, that accepts the, the inter language of intersection, which means that indeed it's closed under intersection. And, and there are a lot of things to, to, to see here. This is in fact a, an extremely powerful idea, right? The powerful idea here is that you can simulate many automata simultaneously by just taking their uh, product of their uh, state space and creating a, uh, you know, this multi-dimensional state. So there is nothing that restricts us not to do this product uh, with seven automata, except of two. And um, it's also a powerful idea. It gives you a very clear idea of how to think about this interaction of two systems, which is uh, a simple but powerful idea. Okay. Um, now you need to prove the correctness of the intersection, but it's not very difficult, right? So all you need to prove by induction is that the transition, uh, the delta star, you know, the transition function for uh, strings over the new automatas is equivalent to just running the, the delta star for the first automata and delta star for the second automata. That's, you know, it's an easy and boring inductive proof, so we're not going to do it. Um, and now we immediately get the, the proof in the previous slide, if you think about it, because, you know, um, you can just prove that we, you know, it's just follow from the definition from the previous slide. There's really nothing much to prove it. You can, again, prove it by induction, but it's in fact uh, uh, what might one call a boring induction. There's nothing interesting there. Okay, now we can do the same thing for union, where literally everything is the same, except for the, the punchline, where the punchline is the set of accepting automatas. And now we need to define it as the union, right? So it's all the state Q1 or Q2, such that Q1 is in a... A1 or Q2 is in A2, where this is really taken, maybe that should have been written better here, this pair is taken from all the pairs, this pairs are taken from Q1 times Q2, right? So you look on all possible pairs and you take all the ones that are uh, either the first coordinate or the second coordinate are accepting, and it's again easy to see that this implies that this is the union, and the proof here is, here is easier because you can already use the fact that uh, the transition function for strings uh, works in the way described above, or in the previous slide to be more precise. Okay, so that's what they say. Uh, and now we can do set difference, right? So you can do the, um, given two automatas, you can look on the language which is the the set difference, formally, it's all the words that appear in the first language, but not in the second language, right? But this is... Um, so you can do it, of course, with product, uh, uh, product construction. But, uh, in fact, just to remind you that A minus B is just A intersection, not B, right? So... Uh, if this is a regular language and B is a regular language, are both regular languages, then this is a regular language, right? Because we know already that regular languages are closed out of the complement. We saw how to convert the DFAs. A is, of course, still a regular language. And the intersection is also a reg closed for regular languages, right? The intersection of two DFA, we know how to compute the, inter uh, the intersection language of two DFAs. 
So this implies readily that uh, indeed this is a, a there is a DFA to recognize this language, a meet regular language. Um, the other construction is, as I said, is by just doing the product construction. Uh, you know, the product construction is easy because everything is automatic except for the last step where you have to define the accept state, but accept states here are easy, right? Those are all the states where Q, those would be all the pairs Q1, Q2, such that Q1 is in the accept, and Q2 is not in, oops, I meant to write Q1, but, you know, the mind is strong, but uh, the hand is weak, and this is not in Q2, right? So that would be all the states that you need in the new accepting set, and clearly this would give you this uh, set difference. So we can do union intersection set difference complement so far. Okay, let me mention a last tidbit for this lecture. So uh, one can think about uh, why can we read the input only once? Maybe we want to go back, you know, maybe the automata forgot something and wants to read it again, you know. We do it all the time. Why shouldn't uh, we let the automatas do it? So imagine a situation where we, we have the input again on the tape and we have this reading mechanism, but and we allow it to go back and forth, right? But again, we are not allowed to modify the tape, right? Modifying, you know, writing stuff on the tape, that's a completely different creature. This is a read-only tape, but the automata is allowed to go back and forth. And it turns out that allowing the automata to go back and forth doesn't buy you much uh, power. It's equivalent to the original automata. And this goes through using this non-deterministic final automata, which is a concept we are going to talk about in the next lecture. Thank you.